Welcome to another edition of This Week in Disc Golf. It's Tuesday, October 4th. I'm Charlie Eisenhood. Let's talk about what happened this week. Well, breaking news coming out today. The Disc Golf Pro Tour Championship is going to set a new record for the largest ever purse at a disc golf tournament. It breaks the 2021 record that was set by the Disc Golf Pro Tour Championship of $250,000. This year, it will be $302,000. With $35,000 going to both the MPO and FPO winners, that makes it the most ever that a player will win for winning a disc golf tournament. The tournament's presenting sponsor this year is Barbasol, the over 100-year-old shaving company. And they are helping subsidize a huge $300,000 payout. $20,000 Twenty grand goes to second place, $14,000 to third, $9,000 to fourth. That's more than a lot of winners made this year. And even if you just get knocked out in round one, you're still taking home $2,500 in MPO and $3,000 in FPO. Barbasol Vice President of Marketing Tim McNamara said in a statement, quote, The Disc Golf Pro Tour fits right into our strategy of targeting active people on the go. Disc Golf's explosive growth and broad participation makes it an attractive partnership where we can connect with this passionate fan base. The Pro Tour Championship continues to raise the bar for the biggest payouts in disc golf. No other tournament has yet cracked the $200,000 mark besides this year's World Championships. Now the $300,000 mark has been breached by this year's Tour Championship. We'll see what's to come in the future. Speaking of the future, the 2023 season schedule for the Disc Golf Pro Tour is now out. We know broadly the events we will have next year, including all of the Elite Series and Major events, as well as most of the Silver Series, although the Pro Tour says that some Silver Series are still set to be added. The Tour begins at the All-Star Weekend, an exhibition event in Tucson, Arizona, and the season kicks off again at the Las Vegas Challenge in Nevada, February 23rd to 26th. We'll head over to the Texas Swing, and then out east, the Music City Open getting elevated to the Elite Series, and then the first major of the year at the Champions Cup in Appling, Georgia. Then we'll go back across the country to Jonesboro and OTB Open, up the California coast into Oregon for the Portland Open and Beaver State Fling, and then back to the Midwest before heading over to Europe for the second major of the year, the European Open. The playoffs start at the Discraft Great Lake Open this year, and then we'll have the World Championships up in Vermont rather than having the Green Mountain Championships. The second playoff event will again be the MVP Open, and then we will close the year with a ton of big tournaments, the U.S. Women's Disc Golf Championship, the United States Disc Golf Championship, and then of course the Disc Golf Pro Tour Championship in Charlotte to close out the year. Overall, there's a few new tournaments coming to the Tour, including the Open at Austin, which will be run by the same TDs that used to run the Open at Belton. And we'll see as well some new Silver Series events, including the Blue Ridge Championships at North Cove, the Disc Mania Open, and the Rochester Flying Disc Open. The PCS Sula Open and Music City Open have both been elevated to the Elite status. There are also new Elite Plus tournaments this year. The Portland Open and Ledgestone Open will be getting this designation. It signifies that they will get increased media from a national perspective bigger purse, uh, more spectators, and an elevated experience. So these are still Elite Series events, but they're going to be four-round tournaments. They're going to have bigger payouts, and we're going to see them treated a little bit bigger by the tour. It could mean that we see national media get involved. We've seen that in the past with the Pro Tour uh, airing on ESPN2 and other ESPN networks. Don't forget that the 2023 season actually gets started in just a couple weeks with two Silver Series events following the Pro Tour Championship with points that will count towards next season. So a chance to get some early points. Silver tournaments are now going to be worth more. We don't know exactly how much more. That information still to come before the start of next year. As we get set for the start of the U.S. Disc Golf Championships and Throw Pink Women's Disc Golf Championships later this week, preview coming up in just a moment. In other news, Nicola Castro's PDGA events suspension has been shortened from nine months to six months 
though the probationary period has been extended from 15 months to 18 months following an altercation that he had with a rules official at the European Open. This means that Lo Castro will be able to begin the 2023 season at the start at Las Vegas Challenge. If his original nine-month suspension had been enforced, he would have been able, unable to compete at the first eight events of the 2023 season. This followed an appeal from Nico Lo Castro, and he told Ulti World Disc Golf, quote, I've been practicing and will be prepared to compete at my best by February 2023. My heart is in the sport of disc golf. Dedication is flowing through me. I've got a lot of love for all the people who have been in my corner throughout this process. Looking forward to working hard and continuing my preparation for one hell of a comeback story. Nico Lo Castro has been suspended since he was disqualified from the European Open following the altercation. Now it's time to take a look at our Stat Mando Stat of the Week. Well, Kale LaVisca won an A-tier in Wisconsin last week, the 2022 Lake Superior Open, and he's now won an A-tier in 17 consecutive years from 2006 until here in 2022. That's the second longest streak in history. Ken Climo did it 19 years in a row and 22 years if you count A-plus wins dating all the way back to 1989. We'll see if Kale can take over that win streak. And now it's time for our social media minute. Well, we all remember James Conrad's incredible throw-in to force a playoff at the 2021 World Championships. From 247 feet out, he threw in a huge Anheuser shot and buried it in order to get to a playoff with Paul McBeth. He went on to win the World Championships. And now there is a new commemorative tee pad out at the fort. That's right. There's a plaque and a permanent concrete tee pad at the exact spot where Conrad threw it in. Cody Nebaker, the owner of the pro shop Distracted, that's on site at the fort, worked with Fort Buenaventura State Park to put in the pad and cement Conrad's throw in history. They've also got a time capsule buried underneath the tee pad with mementos from the tournament, including a commemorative Envy, the Jomez t-shirt, stickers, VIP and spectator badges, and more. And it's set to be opened up in September 2052, 30 years from now. So if you head out to the fort to play around the disc golf, you can try your luck from 247 feet out and see if you too can throw it in. Love that. And now we turn our attention to this weekend and the final major of the season at the United States Disc Golf Championships for MPO. We also have the Throw Pink Women's Disc Golf Championship happening concurrently. It's just an A tier, but it's invite only, and it sure has the feel of being a major, even if it isn't one. Monday qualifying is in the books, and Ian Burchett, Joseph Anderson, Aaron Doyle, Max Rigitnig, and Alex Zeros are all qualified for USDGC. Paige Shu and Sarah Cunningham qualified for the Throw Pink Women's Disc Golf Championship. And all of the action begins on Thursday. If you want to follow along, you got to have a DGN subscription. It will be live action and post-produced available for DGN subscribers. There's no additional pay-per-view fees this year. So go to discgolfnetwork.com to be able to follow all of the action from both the FPO and MPO rounds. Some changes coming to Winthrop this year. You have a new hole two tee pad and pin position. Holes three and four have basically been combined into one very difficult hole where you throw down from the elevated tee pad, have to dodge some hazard, and then go through the gap, the mandos in the trees, around to the protected green. Uh, we see some other changes as well. Hole five's basket is now close to the water and some changes in the back as well. The notorious 888 hole has now eschewed the use of the island across the parking lot, which they're gonna be using for more spectator parking. There will be a blind tee shot, and then the basket is protected on multiple sides by trees within about two feet of the basket. So a very different hole, challenging hole, and we should see scores coming in a little bit lower this year. Not as not as many birdies out on the course due to some of the changes. So tons of exciting action coming at the Winthrop Arena. Another year at the USDGC. 
Paul McBeth will try to become just the third player to win back-to-back USDGC titles. Will Schusterich's done it, and Ken Climo did it back in the first two years of the USDGC. So follow along with all of the action on udisclive.com as well as Disc Golf Network. And of course, we'll break down all of the action for you next week right here on This Week in Disc Golf. Talk to you then.